I have uh, uh, invited uh, three scholars and I have also met of the good compassion for three scholars and my friends and colleagues. Um, because I know the type of work that they uh, have been doing for, uh, for many years, they uh, focus mainly uh, on uh, the uh, Jewish diaspora, both in Romania and in Central and uh, Eastern Europe. Um, so I have first invited Dr. Felicia Batman, who is also the director of the Gottschalk Modern Center uh, at Franklin University, <coughs> in the faculty of uh, uh, foreign languages. Letters. Letters. <laughs> Carmelia Maria Crecciu is also from the University of Bucharest, and very, very recently she is also uh, the, the head of the research center uh, of the, the Jewish theater in, in Bucharest. And last but not least, to my department colleague and friend, Katarina Preda, who has been uh, working uh, lately, and not only lately, actually, on art in uh, uh, the public uh, space. And last on the list, uh, with the first presentation, <laughs> Um, myself also teaching the political science department and uh, I'm a political sociologist so I've been working on ethnicity and ethnicity for quite some time. As I was saying in the beginning of this conference, um, I will go for a more theoretical approach and then all the concepts that I'm, I'm, I'm going to briefly present here are going to be, uh, to be covered by uh, the next uh, uh, speakers, uh, starting with uh, Dr. Felicia Bartman. <laughs> okay, we'll see. Now, as I said, what I'm going to, to do now, I'm, I'm going to look at ethnicity, identity, ethnic group, uh, national minority, uh, nationalism, and uh, uh, public space. And, um, We'll, I'll start with how I usually start my in my courses uh, with uh, looking at uh, a concept that we're using in, rather from a linguistic point of view. Um, and uh, although, for instance, the te the the um, so, no, never mind. Uh, the term ethnicity uh, is taken for granted and is apparently uh, an easy to use concept. Actually, I think it's the fate and. All of you here are social scientists. I think it's our fate to uh, to work with apparently easy to use concepts, but actually uh, concepts which are very difficult to define and that hold um, a lot of um, of depth. Um, ethnicity, for instance, uh, it's something that is used even in common language, not only in scholarly um, um, activities. Um, however, <clears throat> it's one of, um, believe it or not, one of the newest. Um, terms in the field of social sciences, okay, it was used uh, in, a, um, in an academic work by the German sociologist Max Weber, so that means at the beginning of the 20th um, uh, century, um, but for the first time officially uh, the word ethnicity appeared in a dictionary, in the Oxford Dictionary in 1972. So we can say that it's a very, very young um, uh, concept, although it comes from Greek ethnos, but um, in the Greek sense, Vasilis, please uh, tell me if I'm wrong, but I know that it meant heathen or pagan uh, ethnos in the beginning. Uh, and only, only later it, uh, it, it took this uh, uh, meaning that we nowadays use in the colloquial uh, language. Diaspora also comes uh, from Greek, so as many of the, of the concepts that uh, um, we use in social sciences, and then the, the, the concept diaspora and the word diaspora was used in Septuaginta, speaking about the spreading of the peoples uh, around um, the world. Now, I'll, I'll go back though to the initial definition of ethnicity, the one gave, uh, given by, by Weber, who had the merit of speaking of the political aspects of, um, of what ethnicity means. Uh, and he, he stressed the importance of a political community if we want to talk about ethnicity and also about the religious or rather the organized religion aspect that goes with, uh, uh, with ethnicity. Uh, both of these political community and religious community um, end up in the notion of public space or uh, what the social scientists call the public space rather in a an approach a la Habermas, 
meaning that it's a space where people get together, network and um, uh, communicate. Also, ethnicity is a social construct, so it's not just political, it's not just religious, it's, it's uh, social. It also has uh, very deep um, psychological uh, uh, roots, uh, it has uh, linguistic roots uh, as well, uh, and also ethnicity is something as uh, probably is going to be illustrated um, in um, uh, the next presentation. It also has a lot of um, um, emotional charging, uh, if you want. There's also uh, something that we forget. We, whenever we speak about ethnicities and ethnic identity, usually the, the mind pops up to, to minorities. What we, what we forget is uh, actually that ethnicity also refers to majorities as well. Uh, and actually, um, Katarina Preta is going to give a presentation about the national identity, yeah, the, the majority, how is that uh, uh, formed. Uh, but uh, usually the representations and um, uh, the um, behaviors that go with these representations are, as I said, highly elusive and highly emotional uh, because oftentimes we are emotional about something that we actually either don't know at all or don't, we are not very familiar with or something that we know very, very well. Now, moving from ethnicity to et the ethnic identity, um, and the ethnic identity has an institutional um, uh, aspect and also a symbolic one. Uh, and again, these also take us to um, the uh, notion of, um, of public uh, uh, space. Um, the only problem, or one of the problems that we, we have as researchers, that I had as, as a researcher, because I, I've been working on ethnic minorities uh, and ethnic groups for a long time, it was, uh, and my students not very easy. I mean, the only thing that we can do is to, to go for a type of nominal um, a measurement, i.e. To, uh, uh, to name uh, uh, names. And I was thinking, for instance, we can speak of, uh, I don't know, Asian American Muslim, uh, African American from London, uh, Bosniak from Sarajevo, uh, Hungarian Jew from Romania. So what, what does this tell us? Uh, uh, that uh, uh, identities are actually um, uh, multiple, and uh, usually, uh, and again this is just an observation, but usually uh, when one has to make a choice, it goes because of these multiple identities that we all uh, bear uh, with us. I think that we go uh, with uh, uh, the strongest uh, uh, identity. You know, you, you know why I'm smiling. <laughs> yes. Um, and. Um, over here, we, I also bumped into into another into another problem because the question is, where does this identity lie? Not only in terms of minorities, but also in terms of uh, the national uh, uh, identity. Um, and uh, uh, the 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 Western uh, assumption that people's national identity lies with the territory in which uh, they live doesn't really work for the type of research that we're all doing. And actually, here we go uh, more or less directly to uh, the issue of, uh, of diasporas. Now, ethnic groups. Um, ethnic groups are oftentimes informal. Um, sometimes uh, they are shaped by the political uh, field. Sometimes they're shaped by the economic field. Sometimes they're shaped uh, by, um, uh, by the state. Um, uh, and um, there is this debate regarding the ethnic groups in the academia dealing with, uh, with the topic if um, uh, the ethnicity of, uh, of a group is uh, a given or is constructed. Uh, is it primordial or is it instrumental? Uh, my view is that actually we have to find a, a middle way uh, between uh, these uh, uh, two. But the primordial view based on shared beliefs, so what does it mean? It's, it's given, we share the belief, we share the customs, we share the traditions. Um, it means that it excludes exactly the type of uh, diasporas that we're speaking about largely today, the Jewish diaspora and the Armenian uh, diaspora. 
who uh, speak a variety of languages, who can belong to various um, uh, denominations, so they don't belong to the same uh, religions, uh, and who come from so many parts of the world that it, it is um, uh, absolutely impossible to speak about a common uh, a culture. Um, and I was thinking, what does it mean for one, for instance, to be, uh, to be an Armenian, just to adopt a religion? Uh, just to adopt a certain kind of, uh, uh, of behavior. Um, no, that doesn't make one automatically an Armenian. Yet that person, and I think this goes for any kind of diaspora, that, uh, 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 that person has to be accepted uh, by the community in a natural way as a bearer of a common history, yes? So this recognition of the group is uh, in, extremely important. On top of that, that person has to comply to uh, the rules of, um, uh, of that group. Now what counts, or better said, who counts as an ethnic uh, a minority? And again, here we, we bump into the issue of, uh, of territory. Is territory uh, important? Okay, to make their lives easier, uh, many political scientists who deal uh, with uh, uh, ethnicity um, agreed that we can call an ethnic minority, an, a minority ethnic group that lives on a certain territory but doesn't have a kin state across the border. Uh, and um, a national minority, um, an ethnic group that actually does have a kin state across the border, who might be interested in to solving the uh, the problems of that uh, uh, ethnic group. Again, this is a this is a solution that um, uh, was found in order to make our theoretical and academic uh, lives easier easier because in reality things are much more uh, uh, complicated. Um, now. From here, we move to the, the definition of, uh, of a nation, and with it, it always goes uh, uh, the <coughs> definition of what nationalism uh, is, or how it manifests itself. Uh, but let looks, let's look at what a nation or nationality uh, means. It first means that um, uh, we share, or people in that uh, nation share a common belief. Uh, they uh, have a historical continuity, exactly what Bob Ken Matevosian was speaking earlier. They do have an active identity, what, uh, uh, what ABU Europe is doing and uh, uh, other um, organizations of, uh, of the diaspora. Uh, but they also share a common public culture and a public uh, uh, space. Yeah? Um, and the public space here, as I said, could take many shapes from uh, exchanging ideas to what my colleagues are going to uh, present up to uh, the legal um, uh, the legal aspects. Um, now the question that really bothered me for, for a, a while was if the national identities uh, um, are fictitious. Uh, and at the end uh, of uh, at the end. After reading and reading and reading and, and, and covering a lot of material and doing field research, um, I, my, the answer was no, because exactly by sharing this, uh, this public space, it means that the national identities are not uh, uh, fictitious. Moreover, they also create certain obligations. We have ethical uh, obligations uh, uh, towards uh, um, the nation and towards the state. Uh, vice versa, the state has obligations towards uh, uh, the, the nations by providing uh, policies. Yeah? Uh, so we all have, one way or another, uh, rights and obligations at citizen, of citizenship and rights are, and obligations of uh, uh, nationalities. Um, now, this ethical and apparently simple uh, picture is um, uh, actually complicated. Um, by the fact that many of us then um, belong also to or are linked internally um, to our own national uh, uh, community. And this is a topic that is later on going to be you know, discussed by uh, Edward Kantarian, who's going to join us um, uh, on, uh, on Skype again. Um, what do we do with the outsiders? Yes, because uh, sometimes we perceive, in terms of 
um, uh, nations and ethnic identities, we perceive diasporas, for instance, as uh, uh, outsiders, as uh, uh, the others. Um, in this case, actually, the diaspora is really, really important. Uh, diaspora is not represented just by the minorities living in the near abroad, uh, but also uh, <coughs> diasporas living in melting pots uh, uh, nations. And it is the role of the diaspora to solve or at least to alleviate some uh, of these uh, identity problems on one hand and the connection uh, between the state and the various um, uh, ethnic uh, uh, groups. Yeah? Uh, the problem is, and uh, uh, this is again probably something that's going to be tackled by my, my colleagues, uh, the problem is uh, arises when resources are limited and it's enough to have a look at the history of uh, uh, the previous uh, uh, century uh, to see how an authoritarian state, for instance, can transform this, uh, this uh, relationship uh, with its um, um, uh, citizens, uh, depending on the ethnicity or the religion of these people. But, more to about this in the next 